you how to load and unload objects. This uh, method is used in uh, those old uh, Super Mario games to save memory. So as you can see here, uh, currently we have 37 objects in the frame and uh, when I move you can see that uh, the number changes. So uh, those that are not visible are actually destroyed and then created when you get uh, close to where they are supposed to be. Let's make a new frame and uh, need <coughs> first off a player object. Let's call this player and uh, make a simple movement. Just eight directions. Uh, then we need an array. This is uh, important that you have a text array and uh, that the base index is zero. So uncheck this. Then we need the backdrop objects. So these, I'm just going to make a square. The hotspots should be placed in the top left corner. Set the qualifier for them so that uh, they are easier to uh, deal with in with in the event editor because we're going to clone them and make uh, several um, different actives for the backdrop. So you can see that uh, it's not only one type. So let's change the colors of these. <coughs> Red and blue. And let's make a little frame. <coughs> okay, so now we have something to uh, orient us with. So right now we don't have any events, so we just walk right through everything. So now we need an object to store some values. Let's just call this a value holder. Uh, you could store the values in the player as well, or wherever you want actually, but uh, if we want to copy this this code and use it for another application it's easier to have a value holder and just change the or replace the object that you want uh, in the event editor, editor later <coughs> so here we need three values first it's grid grid x then it's Static range. This is um, the range that the uh, objects will unload and load into. So, and uh, we will use uh, the grid as the range. So, uh, one grid will be 32 by 32. So, if we have, for instance, four here, and this player was placed there, then we would see four objects, uh, or four, we would only load four uh, objects in front of uh, us and to the back of us. Uh, and the last value is dynamic range. So first off, let's uh, make it so that we don't go through all the objects. I'm just going to make some art for this. Uh, 
Okay, so this is our player. I'll change the color of this as well. To yellow. Like this. So now, let's start with the events. We don't want to be able to move through any of the objects. So this is just a s simple as you can get it. So now when we move, we collide with this. Don't use the built-in movements. It's terrible. <laughs> so now we have to set the. We have to set the the grid value for all of our backdrop backdrops at the start of the frame. So this is where the group comes in handy. We can just do it here and it will apply for all of our uh, backdrop objects. So we're going to set the uh, X grid. So I'm just uh, using the X value here since the backdrop backdrops uh, will most likely don't have any other values. Of course if you want you can green use whatever value you want and just rename them. So we're going to set the value to its position x divided by its width. So now I'm just going to add a counter so we can see what this does. So I'm going to I'll put I'll, I'll make a group so you see what uh, I'll call it tests and everything in here you don't have to copy because uh, it will it's just for the demonstrations. So when the mouse is Backdrops, we want to see what uh, value, what the uh, x value is of that object. So now you can see the first one is 0, 1, 2, and uh, it depends on uh, these are the x grid values, so we're going to set the y, uh, y grid values as well. Same thing position the y position divided by its height if you have uh, different uh, sized objects you have to add some you have to customize the grid and use that value instead of the height and width of the objects so now uh, we want to set the flag on. This is. Uh, we'll get back to this for later. So, so now we're going to unload the objects that are outside the range. So, uh, if the um, x grid of the object is lower or equal to Players X grid that we store in the value holder <coughs> minus the static range. First off, we can just set. Let's put the set the value, the X grid value to the player's position divided by its width and we'll set the counter to that value instead so we can see when I move my player uh, the X grid value changes so now if if I'm here on the fourth grid and uh, we have um, the static range value is 4 then we should be we should unload everything outside of uh, 
the range. So one, two, three, four. So this green one and everything in that direction and uh, all uh, this whole row. Oh, this row would be inside. But um, let's see if the um, x grid of the backdrop is less than the x grid of the player minus the static range or just copy this if it's greater or equal than the x grid plus the static range we have to start the loop we have to count all the objects that are um, outside of the range because uh, if not it will only pick the first one created then it will write only that one's value. So here, count for each object and we call this save position or save pass. And on the loop, save pass, then we will <coughs> write a string to the array and that will be the name of the object. And <coughs> the x index that we write it to will be the <coughs> sorry the x grid of uh, the object, and the y index will be the y grid of the object. And then we will destroy the object. So now you can see everything outside the range destroyed. If you take a look at this, this is how the grid essentially looks. So this is x1, x no, x0, x1, x2, x3. So this is how we save the, uh, the values to the array. So So this one will be saved here and this one will be saved here and this here and so on and so forth. So this one would be the x0 y2. So if we look here the the name of or the string that is written in that in x0 and y0 is uh, active so if I go to y2 it should be active 2 because that's the name of the object right and that's correct so <coughs> now we just unload all the objects and we don't load them in yet so now we have to load all the objects. Let's uh, make some comments. Save positions and unload. So the next one we're going to do is uh, create objects and or just. load objects. Yeah. So we don't want to always load objects because that would uh, destroy the purpose. It would require more from uh, uh, your application. So we only want to do it when we move because uh, or when we change the grid. So we can say that if The, if the X grid of um, the player is different than the calculation that we use to uh, get the X grid, so that was the X position divided by the width of the player. If it's different. 
add one to the counter. Just to, just to see that it happens every... It doesn't happen before I cross the grid, so... That's... Uh, the reason it didn't change the value yet now is because we uh, set the value before we check it. So this one has to be down here. We can destroy this. Because this is actually where we want to upgrade the X grid uh, value for the value holder. And uh, to make it uh, work, we have to add it, uh, set the value after we do our conditions here. So if we add one to the counter, we can uh, see that it works every time I change the grid. Okay. Also, at the start of the frame, we want to do this. Because, as you can see, the, all of the objects got destroyed. So, yep. Yeah. So now you can see every time I change the grid, uh, something happens. Okay. So let's remove that counter thing. And um, when we move, we want to set the dynamic value and this um, we want to set it to uh, use two parentheses parent parent yeah whatever um, and you take the X grid X grid of the player. No, oh, I mean, you take the x position of the player divided by its width. This is how we how we calculate the grid, and we subtract the the x grid because. Um, this is going to happen before we change uh, the value of x grid, so we have to calculate the true position of the or the true uh, grid value of the player uh, in the manual way, and then subtract the x grid. And then we will multiply this by the static range plus the. Um, the X, X grid. And we're missing a close bracket. Where? Here. Before the multiplication. This should be right. Let's set. Uh, let's check the value that we get. And then we have to set the X grid last. So we set the dynamic range first, and then X grid. Or else it won't work uh, with the calculations. So, as you can see, when I move to the right, uh, it changes the dynamic range to 11. So that's the, uh, that's the row of, uh, of uh, objects from the array that we want to load <coughs> and when I move to the left it changes to 4 and now to 3 because these uh, since we move in that direction we want to only load those objects we don't need to load anything over here now we want to read the array at the dynamic range uh, value <coughs> so we're going to start a fast flip call read array and this has to run the y dimension times so it will go uh, through everything 
on one of the rows. And the y dimension of the array will change. I think you can see it here. Yeah, y dimension 15. That's because there are 15 objects here. Since even if it's set to 10 as default, if you write something in uh, outside of the dimension, then it will extend the dimension. So you don't have to you don't have to set this manually. So when we're on the loop, read array, then we want to create uh, the object. And you see, this is why we write the name of the object in the array. Because uh, none of the objects can have the same name. So when we create it by name, it's a unique thing. So, or it's uh, one of these, I can change. If I try to rename this to just active, it will be named active too, because uh, it can't have the same name as any other objects. So let's create the object by name. And um, the name of the object we want to create is the one that is saved in the in the position that we want to check. So read string from x, y position. So the x position that we want to read is the dynamic range value. And the y position we want to read is the loop index. Since we uh, run the loop as uh, many times as the y dimension is big, if that makes any sense. So, the y dimension, uh, the y index should be the loop index of read array. And it doesn't really matter where you put it, because we're going to uh, set its position before anything else happens. So we have to make a new read array on, on the loop read array. And if the flag of the object is off, oh, if the flag is off, see here we set the flag on on all the objects starts and then we destroy them so uh, if the flag is off that means if uh, only those that are newly created will have their flag off we want to set the X position to the uh, we ex essentially do the same uh, math that we did to uh, read the array. So it's the it's the dynamic range multiplied by the width of the object. So the dynamic range is for the x position and the loop index is for the y position. So set the y position to the loop index of read array oh, and multiply it by the object's height. So now we forgot to set the flag on. doesn't work and that's because we didn't set the grid value for the object yet so it gets unloaded right away since uh, the default value of the object is zero so we have to set the 
x value to its uh, position x divided by its width. It's the same as we did here. Actually, you can just copy this. So if you delete the, this one and the flag, and you paste it in here, it will be uh, added on. So now it should work. And there's the pizza, pizza timer. Just in time. It's working now. If uh, you're not going to do any fancy stuff. So if you were to make a Mario clone, this would be just fine. But if you were to skip, um, skip a grid, for instance, if you were on this grid here, and you skipped this one and jumped right to this one, then you wouldn't load this row of uh, objects. So, we're going to add some more events to make sure that you can teleport around or warp through or dash or whatever. So. Uh, make a comment teleportation <coughs> and let's teleport uh, the player uh, when we click we just want to set the position of the player to the position of the mouse Update the no, never mind. So now you can see it doesn't work. And if I start moving, we start loading them again. So <coughs> first off, we have to make another uh, teleportation uh, event and it's going to start a loop that we have here this, the same loop as this one save position so it will save the position of all of the objects in the frame and it will uh, destroy all the objects as well so it will clear the whole frame and then it will load all of the uh, then we will load all the all the objects afterwards so here we set the position of the player and we want to update the the x grid so just copy this and uh, delete the dynamic range stuff <coughs> So now the X grid value is updated. And then we want to start a loop. And this will do almost the same as read array. But the read array is just one row. Now we want to load everything inside um, our range. <coughs> so let's call this scan array. This has some tricky math. We want to uh, we want to say if we're here and we have four range, then we want to run the loops uh, through all of these, all of these. Here, 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 and here. So the way we do that is we need the y dimension of the array. 
we need to multiply it by the static range that we have. And then we m need to multiply that by 2. So um, if we're here, we will run it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times. Multiplied by 4, since that's our range. So uh, that will cover all of these four. And then we want to multiply that by 2, so we get the other direction as well. So we scan all of this. <coughs> so now we're going to run the loop. Scan array. And on this loop we're going to create the objects, just like we did in this event. So we're going to get the string from the array. And this is where it get com gets complicated. Uh, so we need to take the x grid from the player, minus the static range, plus the loop index scan array but then we need to divide this by the y dimension of the array and the y offset is the loop index of scan array mod dimension of the array. Syntax error. Yeah, we need to have this in brackets. Like this. And this good. Doesn't matter where you create it because we're going to copy this scan array and we're going to set the position of the objects. So Let's start with the exposition, set it to first add a bracket, and then take the x grid of the player, subtract the static range, add the loop index of scan array, and then we need to divide this by and add another bracket, the y dimension of the array, close the bracket two times and multiply this by the width of the object. And then we take the y position, this is uh, the first add a bracket, loop index, scan array mod at brackets y dimension two ending brackets multiply this by the height of the object and then we take this here copy it because we need to change the values and set the flag to on so hopefully this works now and of course it doesn't. Hell. And that is because we forgot to set, uh, check if the flag were off. So all of the... You can see there's 25 objects, but all of them were placed in the same spot. Because we didn't check if the flag were off. So there we have it. Ladies and gents, this is now working. So, if you like the tutorial, if you want to, want me to keep making tutorials, you should leave a like in the comments, because that's what motivates me to do this. So, I hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time.